This next problem is the extremely slick exercise in Gauss's law. A uniformly charged non contact sphere would have total charge Q if it was a complete sphere. However, someone has come along and hollowed out as shown in the figure below. Right, so this is the hollow out part. I'll show this as this part. And I'll show the, the original filled sphere like this. Right. Okay. Um, find the electric force field at the point P. Okay. So let's look at this very carefully. So I have hollowed out a sphere of radius R over 2 right, inside the sphere along some axis. Let me call this axis the x-axis. All right. Okay. And basically this entire sphere would have had charge Q if it was a full sphere. All right. So this is a very good problem in Gauss's law. And the reason why it's such a good problem in Gauss's law is that Basically, you can reconstruct this as two Gauss's law problem, right? Okay, so let's basically let's consider what that means, all right? So let me imagine had the sphere been complete, okay? All right? So had the sphere been complete, I would have basically wrote, written this down as the flux from the full sphere is equal to the electric field dot A is equal to Q inside over um, epsilon zero. Okay. Now Q inside, well that was just that would just be Q, right? Okay, because I'm um, judiciously have chosen point P in this problem to be basically outside the sphere. Right? So it's gonna be Q over epsilon zero. And E dot A, well well that's just gonna be basically the electric field times four pi r squared. And so very simply, the electric field of the full sphere is going to be equal to um, Q divided by 4 pi um, epsilon naught r squared. Okay, in D. Now, when we pick this point here, it should be the r hat direction, right? But I know that because I've chosen my axis like this, I'm going to choose this along the x hat direction, all right? This choice will become very important in a second, right? Now, how do I imagine? What does this hollow sphere mean? It has no charge. So this internal sphere cavity is neutral, right? But there's another way of thinking about that. Is that what if instead of thinking as a thing I emptied out, what if I plopped a sphere in here that has negative the charge density of the uniformly charged non-conducting sphere, right? So this sphere in here has basically a charge density of instead of, of minus rho, okay? Right? Um, right? Relative to the charge density of the full sphere, which is rho, okay? So if I were to do that, let me consider what is the total charge inside this smaller sphere. Well, the small charge of the of the hollow sphere, called hollow, is going to be equal to minus rho um, times the integral of dv, which is just going to be minus rho times the volume of the small sphere. But what is the volume of the small sphere? Well, this is simply going to be equal to minus rho, okay, four thirds pi um, r over 2 Q. Now what is the charge density that we choose here? Rho. Well rho is the charge density of the full sphere. And so basically the charge density of the full sphere is just rho is equal to Q over the volume of the full sphere. And that's basically Q over 4 thirds pi capital R Q. Right? So if we plug all these things together what we end up getting is that this just becomes Q, the 4 thirds pi cancel each other, the R cubes cancel each other. The only thing that's not canceling each other is the 2 to the Q power, which is 8. All right? So Q of the hollow sphere is just Q over 8. Okay, so let's do the flux of the hollow sphere. This is again E dot A is Q inside the 5 epsilon naught. And inside now refers to this sphere only, okay? 
and we're going to basically add these two electric fields together and get the right answer. So this is going to be equal to Q over 8 over epsilon naught, right? Because that's Q to the side. This is going to be equal to E. Now, it has to be extraordinarily careful. Sorry. So this thing with specify what R has to be in a second, all right? Uh, this R is different. So this R is this distance here, okay? Whereas this R is this distance here, right? And this distance is a R plus a R, so that's 2R. So in fact, this problem right here is actually going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught um, 2R squared in the x hat direction, right? Sorry if I compressed that a little bit. So now this one is just going to be simply be equal to 4 pi. Now this is not um, 2r, this is 3 halves r, right? Because I have a 1r here and then a 1 half r there. So that's going to be 3 halves r squared for the area is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon epsilon naught and this is q over 8 right so if you put this all together this applies to the electric field of the hollow sphere it's going to be equal to q over 8 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 3 halves r squared and then what direction is it it is in the uh, x hat direction. Now, you guys let me go away for some murder right here. This actually should be a minus q over 8, minus q over 8, okay? Just to make sure that all my signs are correct. All right, because signs are important actually in this game. All right, so what is the final electric field that I feel, see at point P? The electric field I see at point P is the electric field of the full sphere plus the electric field of the hollow sphere, which is going to be equal to, now this thing is going to be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, well that's just going to be Coulomb's constant K, okay, over R squared in the x hat direction, these are the common factor here. Well, I'm not sure what just happened there, but we just had some technical difficulties, but last I was just saying, basically you would get basically K Q over R squared x hat and then one quarter which comes from the full part right here the two to, to the two squared and then from the latter part from the hollow one you get a one eighth and then a three half squared is a nine over four so if you put this all together this is going to be the coulomb's constant q over r squared the x hat direction this is going to be 0 0.25 minus 0 0.055, 0 0.6 roughly. And so this roughly turns out to be something like um, 0 0.194 K Q R squared X hat, right? And there is my answer right there. It's a beautiful problem because you're just combining Gauss's law for basically two different spheres and using the superposition principle to basically put all these things together. Hope that was helpful.